Hey guys, it's Tarot and Beyond. In today's reading, we are looking at mystery messages. That is what Spirit told me the reading topic was going to be. So that's what we're going to do. So I have no idea what the messages are going to be. We're going to find out together. And in the spirit of mystery, we have the cards face down. So I don't even know what the significators are for each of the groups, but we've got group number one, number two, and number three. Use the timestamps below in the description box or the chapter notes to jump ahead to your chosen reading or readings. If you feel called to more than one, that's totally fine. Use your intuition, take the messages that resonate, leave the rest as these are general readings, and we will see you there. All right. Hi, group number one. Welcome to your reading. Let's find out what your mystery message is. You have start doing things you love. Okay. Start doing things you love, group number one. I'm seeing notes and stuff being important, like make notes about what it is that you enjoy. I just heard the word document. Um, okay. So I'm getting this energy of like documenting what you're liking documenting what's working for you, documenting your life. Maybe it's like you go out somewhere and you take some pictures so you can look back on it and be like, oh yeah, like that little excursion was really fun or writing down what you enjoyed about your day. This could even be like a gratitude practice for you. But I'm seeing like doing it daily, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, weekly, you know, doing it consistently to some degree, not, not so that it becomes obligatory or so that you feel restricted by it but but just as a practice of kind of like seeing what you like if, if that makes sense now I'm, I'm wondering why this is the message that's coming through for you group number one why is this the message the five of cups okay this is why this is the message because the five of cups is about grief and things that you don't have and focusing on the things that you don't have so i can see why the message here from spirit or the guidance is going to be about focusing on what you do have focusing on what you do like um i'm hearing letting go of the past yeah that can be what the five of cups talks about but i heard that from spirit letting go of the past is important here for you group number one and getting out into the world, her hair is really long like Rapunzel and it's reminding me of the movie Tangled where she's trapped in a tower for 16 years of her life and all she wants is to go see the floating lights and that's like her one dream and she finally gets out there and she goes on this pretty epic adventure. So I feel like maybe you've been cooped up group number one or you just need to focus more on your dreams, on what you what you enjoy. It, it's like Oh yeah, they're also showing me in that movie how she's like always filling her time with different hobbies and different things that she likes to do, painting, baking, reading, um, you know, she she does a lot of creative things, sewing, and she has a whole song about it <laughs> in the very beginning of the movie. So I feel like this is Spirit also saying document what you enjoy doing because that's going to give you indications of where you can find more happiness and they want you to do more of that basically so like do the things you like write down the fact that you like them and then just keep doing those things death oh my god the death card is like haunting the readings the last few times the last few days i've been been doing readings it's like death card just popping out all over the place five of cups and grief as well what is going on collective are we going through a collective dark night of the soul are we going through a collective death rebirth process i think so so i think this is why spirit is saying focus on the good things focus on what brings you passion what makes you happy because this is going to counter some of the density of that darkness that is being evoked from within us and from within the collective so this death energy doesn't overcome us and put us into despair right like we have to have a light heart this little canary here we have to have a light heart to find our way now the other thing that this canary is reminding me like the, the little bird on his finger feels like the canary in the coal mine and the canary in the coal mine was was used to indicate if there were noxious gases present. The canary would die or have difficulties early on to let the workers know, get the heck out of Dodge, because if you don't, you could die. So there's something here about like a canary in the coal mine for you, group number one, and it could be 
symptoms of not doing those hobbies you like. Like if you're going through um, depression or, and I know as someone who has struggled with depression for years, like massive bouts of it and then little bouts of it and like major depressive, depressive stuff and then like minor. And the symptoms that come up when the depression gets bad is that I don't like to do things that I normally like to do. I just don't have any energy for it or have no motivation to do it. So I feel like there's something here Group number one about getting back on track by tracking, (laughs) like getting back on track by tracking what those little canaries are telling you about yourself. Like, are you doing the things you used to like doing? And why are you not if you're not? Is it because you've outgrown those things? Is it because you, um, there's something missing and you need something more? I think a lot of, uh, A lot of healing will come for you, group number one, when you focus on on really like having what you need and needing what you have. That's such a, okay, what does that even mean, spirit? Having what you need and needing what you have. Hmm. I don't know. I'll just leave that there. (laughs) Five of pentacles. Okay, this is why. Five of pentacles and the five of cups, whew, yeah, this is like, I don't have what I loved and I don't have what I need. And it's been taken away from me. It's been ripped from my hands. It's been pried from my grasp. And I'm hearing from my cold, dead fingers, you know, it's like, so I feel like you need to fight for your happiness, group number one. You need to fight for your right to live is actually what I just heard. Okay, so that's pretty intense. What's what's going on? What's going on, group one? Um, there's something about your spirit that needs to be rekindled or it's like it, you, you need to prove to yourself that it's worth living. Um, something about really, I'm hearing biting the bullet. Okay. What is that about? Biting the bullet. I think that means like admitting something to yourself, biting the bullet. I'm not sure what that phrase is, is a reference to, but it could be about like admitting something to yourself that's tough. Um, getting to getting to the core of something, getting very honest with your, being very honest with yourself about where you're at or what you're needing or the lack of your needs being met. Hmm. Four of pentacles. Uh, yeah, it does. It feels, that's kind of going back to that energy of like having what you need and needing what you have. There's always cat hairs on this freaking table (laughs) because kitty likes to come in here. And I am not one of those like hashtag clean girl aesthetics. I'm like messy girl aesthetic. So yeah, (laughs) I feel like just embracing whoever you are, group number one is also part of this message because that just came up. But yeah, it feels like being able to, to let go and hold on. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, let go of the things that are keeping you complacent, that are keeping you dissatisfied, that are keeping you in states of despair or grief or feeling or perception of lack or belief of lack. And then choosing to hold on to what provides you with that hope, that passion, that joy, those, even if they're fleeting moments of happiness, those like really, really positioning yourself strategically to create more of those to have more of those it's like a conscious choice is what spirit is telling me it's a conscious choice to welcome more of those experiences into your life and to value them and to prioritize is the word that they're giving me prioritize them and they keep showing me um like pictures in a reel or pictures in like a photo album Um, I'm seeing it like digitally, like on your phone, you know, in your photos app, but it could be otherwise, but I I, I'm getting this energy of like document your joy, document the moments of happiness. So you remember that you had that and, and that it's possible again and you can make more. It's that's kind of the vibe I'm getting the devil. Okay. Look here, here, we're getting really down to brass tacks here. Group number one, the devil is, (sighs) fighting you right now is actually what I'm hearing. The devil is fighting you. You are fighting the devil. And in this case, the devil is the fear that something will never improve, whether it's your mood, your finances, grief after a death or a loss in the family I just heard. Okay. Um, Just 
like losing a part of yourself or going through some kind of a, a crisis, like a midlife crisis or quarter life crisis or whatever it happens to be. There's something that the devil is trying to get you to believe, which is that it will never get better that the light at the end of the tunnel is an illusion or a mirage or that, you know, you keep digging, trying to dig your way out of this hole and the, the hole just keeps getting deeper and you're on like this infinite, infinite loop. Do not believe that, okay? Group one, do not believe that because that's the devil whispering lies in your ear. Do not believe that. Do not give your power to that thought or that belief or that experience, even if it's being reflected back to you at the physical level. The spirit is telling me so strongly, like, this is a choice. This is a battle of wills and your will has to prevail. It has to, and it will, but <laughs> will, pun intended. <laughs> but, but seriously, like group number one, this is some, this is some big stuff that we're, we're talking about, like battle of the darkness and the light we're talking about battle of like god and the devil are at war right here within you and you are being tasked with the very mundane acts of small happinesses and focusing on more of those because that is what will win the battle that is what will win the day is what i just heard what will win the day it's not big acts of pure bliss. It is small acts of happiness incorporated consistently throughout your day or days or weeks. Ooh, wow. What an interesting message. Nine of swords. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Like, this feels like a mental health battle. And I can say that because I've been there i am still there a lot of the time it's not really like something that ever fully goes away but maybe that's even the devil talking like me saying that maybe that's the devil talking again because maybe it does go away maybe it does get better and we won't know until we find out right like we won't know until the death toll comes and we leave the body and then we'll finally have that sort of conclusive evidence of whether it would get better or not but it's like it's not done until the fat lady sings is what i'm is what i'm hearing that's what i'm getting from this reading group number one so yeah okay there's another thing that's coming to mind uh, i heard this somewhere i can't remember where but the the, the, the saying was if you're going through hell don't stop why would you stop in hell? <laughs> like, so if you're going through hell, this is not the time to stop. This is the time to keep pushing. This is the time to keep moving and to pay attention to the symptoms of like when it gets worse or when it gets better and really track those things. Because the more I think awareness you have of what's going on there, the easier this will be to um, observe and then treat, if that makes sense. On the bottom, we have the two of wands. And I feel like this is again you starting to do the things you love again and thinking about what that is and choosing your path and getting out of your slump or rut or getting out of your head um getting out of fear you know really like choosing choosing the choosing to believe that you have options even if it feels like or looks like you don't it's it's really like this is a battle of the wills like i said so elder wisdom elderberries elderberries i was seeing something about elderberries earlier today and they were giving me something about cough so if if you're sick physically ill something like that as well could be the case with the five of pentacles they're they're saying that there's health i'm hearing on the horizon okay health is on the horizon and there's wisdom and happiness is what i just heard as well there's wisdom and happiness not all of life's lessons need to be learned through suffering Mm. Yeah, that just gave me shivers through my body when I said that. Magician ginseng. I'm feeling something to do with immunity because elderberries are about immunity. Ginseng can also be about immunity. And 
um, manifesting good health and wealth because those two things are connected but I'm seeing uh, something about your immunity now at the physical level this could be represented in the fact that like maybe your physical health or your mental health has been lowered and even you know even if it is just purely mental health I don't think that we should even differentiate those because mental health is literally physical health it's your brain it's an organ it's not like your mind is something ethereal out in the space realms like no it's like literally your brain which is an organ which can malfunction just as much as your stomach or your arms or your legs or your bones or whatever. So um, mental health is physical health and it can have an impact obviously directly on the physical health like stress and grief are known to lower the immune system. So I'm seeing you rebuilding your immune system by, first of all, again, focusing on the things that you love, focusing intentionally on what makes you happy, getting out of a rut. I keep hearing that, getting out of a rut and manifesting healing, manifesting, I'm hearing pleasure and joy and movement could be part of this as well. The fairies are with you. I just got that message, real strong group number uh, group number one, the the fairies. And you know what? Like, I'm such a fairy child and I love the fairies. And I played with them ever since I was a little girl. I knew that they were there. I could feel them. I could see them. And um, they are so good for helping you to heal your heart by getting like free they 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 feel like freedom like whenever i'm with the fairies my heart feels light i feel joyous i feel playful you know i start doing things i love again i i feel like a child and that hope returns and i feel like the fairies are surrounding you right now group number 1 like i almost want to cry cuz i'm seeing them around you like this tree they they're all just like around you fluttering around you like that and Jupiter is in both of these cards and Jupiter is about optimism. See that sign there? It's optimism, hope, joviality, faith, philosophy, belief, and and just like generally a good mood. So I'm seeing a lot here to do with like upliftment of your mood and I, I keep hearing getting out of a rut and getting out of some kind of routine that was not serving you group one. So um yeah, some, some kind of a structure that you built that you were holding on to to try and protect yourself, but that ultimately may have become detrimental or harmful to you in some way. Um, but yeah, you've got these fairies around you that are helping to uplift you is what the, the, that's the energy they're giving me, uplift you. Dragon's blood, anima mundi. Hmm. Okay, this is a random message, but I did just get it come through. It's not going to be for everyone. But if you have had, if you have questioned whether you should go and get a blood test um, because you've been having some physical symptoms, group number one, you're being advised to, yeah, do that. That's a random message that just came through, but I did, I did get that. Something about like, if you're having some symptoms that are not explainable, or that you don't normally have, going and getting a blood test will be helpful. Okay, so yeah, something about that. I'm going to get one. No, they said two more. Okay, okay. St. John's wort with radiance. Mm. You know, the burning house here. I keep getting this canary in the coal mine type of energy. I don't know what this is referring to. It could be something to do with your house, your living situation, your um, environment in general. It's like there's something going on here that you need to remove yourself from. Maybe it's literally just getting out of the house more, running free, being wild, like getting back to your, your animated spirit, your... Um, yeah, they're showing me the bike over here. It's like it's like getting out and doing something. Passion flower, surrender. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I heard surrender your guilt and fear. Okay, I mean, guilt and fear are mechanisms of the devil. Like... I've seen this in client sessions where there will literally be like a little cartoon devil sitting on someone's shoulders, like that cliche, 
that stereotype, I've seen it. It's like an, it's like a little entity that will sit on the shoulder and be like, you can't do it. You're not good enough. You should feel guilty for this. It's never going to change. You should do this and that. You should stay in this bad situation because there's no way out. And I've, I've literally seen that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what is this? And it's like little, little, like, um, I've seen other types of entities and stuff too, like leeches and um, little goblin gremlin type things. I've seen like, I've seen full on demons, guys. Like it's crazy. I'm like a demon fighter. I've done that for years. And the, so like the devil is real, like, you know, but it's, it's not like something outside of you that is, I mean, it is and it isn't. It, it is something outside of you, but it is also something inside of you. And the wisdom that I'm seeing here for you, group number one, is to surrender to the fact that there are certain things that you cannot control, but what you can control is your free will and what you choose to do with it. And free will is best expressed through the intention of our choices. So if the intention is to live a happy life and your actions reflect that, then that is you using your free will, even in the face of some kind of a challenge. I also just heard the word disapproval, okay? So like maybe it's about disapproval from someone else or from yourself. I can, maybe that's where the guilt comes in. Hmm. Do we need clarifiers or, or anything else? Get the astro dice, they said. Okay. Then we shall do that. The sun in Capricorn in the 10th house. Whoa. That came out of left field. The sun is yourself. Uh, it is also your physical body. It's your identity. It's your ego. It's your mind. It's the way you see yourself, I just heard as well. Okay, the way you see yourself could be changing. You have Capricorn. So this is like structure, routine, stability, needing to feel grounded, needing to feel protected in some way, working towards a goal. And the 10th house is you really focusing on how you are seen, how people know you or what your reputation is. Now, I'm curious as to how this connects to the main message, which was really more about you focusing on what brings you happiness and breaking some kind of a curse in regard to this negative energy, this, this mind, I'm hearing mindset shift, yeah, and uh, really being able to shine. Okay, so now I'm actually seeing they're bringing me back to radiance here radiance being confident to radiate your light i'm hearing by surrendering to the process and i'm also hearing leaps and bounds so you're going to be moving forward in leaps and bounds group number one and you may not have felt like this was possible especially if you're coming from this five of cups five of pentacles nine of swords devil energy it's like you, there's this like belief that, oh, I'm never going to be able to make progress or it's never going to change. It's always going to be this way. I'm seeing leaps and bounds. And they gave me that, that phrase. This is because you're shifting the way that you're seeing the situation and the way that you're participating with that energy, with the sun card. It's like you're redirecting your energy. I'm also getting energy of healing. Yes. Spirit rejuvenation. They just said, Yeah, our spirit is like our will. Really, it is. And if your spirit is broken, then then your emotional well-being and your physical health are going to suffer. So the devil was trying to break your spirit, group number one. And I'm here to tell you, don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. You're better than that. You deserve better than that. And you will do all that you've set out to do. I'm hearing that and I'm feeling it strongly through my body. Like you will do whatever it is that you've set out to do. So just keep that hope and that faith alive. Pay attention to what's going on. Read the symptoms. Take care of yourself. And then put that out there. There's something about maybe going public in some way or being public in some way in regard to what you've built Maybe this is why it's important for you to document this stuff as well, group number one. Maybe you'll, be, maybe you'll end up sharing it one day, 
right? Like, here's my my story. Here's what I went through. Here's my ups and downs. And it's like an inspirational thing for someone else or it can be the canary in the coal mine for someone else struggling with that same thing because they didn't realize the symptoms or they didn't realize the patterns. And you sharing that gave clarity to someone who didn't see it because they were lost in the forest and couldn't see the trees. You know, like this is this is kind of what I'm seeing here. This is a really inspiring experience that you're going through even though it may not feel like that at all right now at all but ultimately what will come out of this will be inspiration i'm getting that very strongly i can feel it in the back of my lower spine weirdly enough i'm feeling like this rushing in my low back that's like root chakra area that's like a kundalini stuff. So yeah, we're talking about like major spirit, major fire. And that's the, the vital force energy in the body that keeps you healthy too. And it's the manifestation energy from which we create. So like seriously, 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 group number one, do not give up. Do not back down. Surrender to this process, but use your free will. Like I've said this before in so many readings, but like surrender is control because it's paradoxical in nature unit unity is paradox and so when you surrender that's when you're in control when you try to control and you don't surrender that's when you're actually the least in control of what's going on that's where you cannot effectively use your free will and i'm hearing the word strategy okay so there's some kind of a strategy that you are being given or that you're going to see or that you're going to be able to discern i just heard the word discern you'll be able to discern a strategy that is effective for you the wheel is turning i'm seeing this the wheel the wheel is turning okay so that means that your fate is changing because your your free will is being exerted and your spirit was not broken is what spirit just said your spirit was not broken all right okay so group number one that is the very interesting mystery message i'm curious to know how this resonates with you if you feel comfortable sharing i know from my experience how this would resonate with me and i i feel kind of called to mention that because like i said i've struggled with depression anxiety complex post-traumatic stress disorder um i've lost my, my mom three years ago i've been struggling for the past couple of years with financial struggle like financial debt and the devil has been whispering in my ear so like i totally get it i totally get it and if you're resonating with this i want you to know that you're not alone not at all you're not alone at all and you will get out of this. There's a lot of wisdom that you've gained from this. All right. Okay, group number one. So thank you so much for being here. I hope this reading was helpful. I'm sending you so much love. So much love. Let me know if there's anything you need in the comments. I am... Um, I'm not always super good about replying to comments. I try to read I, I don't, I, I can't even say I try to I read all of them because I don't, I try, I read like some of them and, uh, but I know that spirit will direct me to the comments that I'm meant to see and they're always like really synchronistic. So everything is in divine alignment. All right, guys, I love you and we'll see you in the next reading. Bye. All right. Hi, group number two. Welcome to your reading. Let's find out what your card is and what this mystery message is for you. Be open to whatever comes next. And the word beautiful really, really stood out to me here. So I feel like whatever's coming next, group number two, is going to be beautiful. And I'm hearing something about you being beautiful as well, whether you're male or female. Uh, it's just radiance. I'm feeling like you're radiating. Hmm. I like that. Okay, let's get some more information. So for group number two, Spirit, what is this mystery message that you have brought them here today to receive? Ace of Pentacles. I, I heard everything's working out well or everything's going to be okay. I, it was actually like they said that same, those two lines kind of like over each other. Everything's working out. The money tree is standing out to me there as well. 
And I just heard synchronicity. So for someone or maybe even multiple people in this group, spirit is showing you money trees as synchronicities, either leading up to this reading or after it. Yeah, okay. And that can be an indication that you're aligning with prosperity. And there's also a lot of growth happening here. The money tree grows and we did have the word grow here. So something is growing. Seeds that you've planted in the past are growing. They're showing me somebody doing a beauty routine. Like, did you get a new face wash or something like that? Because they just showed me somebody doing like some skincare. And they showed me that the seeds planted are growing in that case is you starting to see your skin health improve or like your your fine lines go away or like your your radiance. They keep giving me that word radiance. And it's like you're glowing. Yeah, your skin is glowing or like you're starting to see the results of that. Two of pentacles. There's a lot of like physical, very physical energy here in your reading group number two. So it, it feels like you are very much focused on the physical things like your money, your resources, um, your physical environment, like your home, your body. Yeah, I'm getting a lot to do with that. The Fool. I love this Fool card. It's just so happy. <laughs> so definitely what is coming is very positive. Yeah, and it's coming fast is what I'm hearing. This feels like youth, freedom, um, playfulness, things balancing out, the chariot, moving forward. I, again, I'm getting free. I, I actually heard getting free, like getting free. I was going to say I'm getting free as in like that's the freedom energy that I'm getting. But no, they said getting free. So like you could be getting free. <laughs> How many times can I say getting free? <laughs> so yeah, this is this is beautiful temperance. Yeah, something is really balancing out. You, I'm hearing trial and error. You tried some different things and you were juggling to see what would work. And it's like you figured it out, group number group number two. You figured it out. Five, six, seven, eight of cups. Eight of cups. I heard you went after what you wanted. Yeah. Whoa, ten of pentacles. Ten of pentacles. That's the money tree full grown. From the ace to the ten. Oh boy, this is amazing. Yeah, it's like that one seed that you planted turns into a mighty oak, like that tiny little acorn turned into a mighty oak, which has all these other acorns on it. So you're like growing an entire forest, but you're also receiving all of the, I'm hearing dividends of the effort that you've put in or the work you've done or the steps you've taken to better your situation. This is really cool, group number two. Um, can we fit them all on the top? Because I kind of want to do that. Let's just do that. If we can do that. Because then I can put this other one by the side here. Because I kind of want to keep that Ten of Pentacles present, front and center. Boom, bam, money, ma'am. I'm happy. I'm happy for that. For you, <laughs> group number two. I'm hearing physical growth. Yeah, something about like, and your beauty, your beauty is growing or um, yeah, your resources are growing. I heard clients as well. Like if, you, if, you, if you're somebody that has clients, your client base is growing. Um, yeah, they keep showing me something about the body and the face. I feel like you're just feeling beautiful, group number two. Rhodiola, wisdom. The unicorn really stood out to me. That was like the first thing I saw. So I feel like you are just radiating this beautiful light. Like that's the first thing that I think about when I when I think about unicorns, the fact that they're beautiful. Then I think about like purity, innocence, which is also the fool card. I think about magic. Wow. Whoops, there. 
Wow, 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 wow. Reishi retreat. I just got really stumped with that card. That was so weird. That very rarely ever happens. Usually when I'm doing a reading, each card will immediately speak to me and I'll be able to channel through. And it just, I like completely was like blank when I was like looking at this card. I'm like, what the heck is the message? So I'm not going to try and force it. I'm just going to let that happen. And if the message from this card comes back out, or it wants to be known, I will let it come to me when it's ready. <laughs> Maybe that's the message itself. We have mugwort, psychic healing. Or maybe I just needed this card to clarify because psychic healing and retreat kind of feels like to me doing some psychic healing by retreating or going on a retreat. That's sort of the vibe I was getting from it, but it was like, I couldn't fully access the message. You also have, you had wisdom here and then you have the owl, which can talk about wisdom. And there's this elderly woman here as well. So she's, she holds a lot of wisdom. Yeah, I'm hearing wisdom keeper. And this mirror here, I feel like you're seeing the beauty in all of your stages, appreciating yourself as you are. Yeah. Sage, blessing. Wow. I feel like you've prayed for something, group number two, and you've been tending to that. You've been like, you planted that seed, you prayed that it would bless you, and you stoked that fire. They're actually showing me the scene in Totoro when they plant the, the acorn in the ground. Oh my God. Yeah, I was talking about the acorn before and the oak, they plant the acorn in the ground that, that he gives them in that little seed bag, and um, it doesn't grow for a while, and May gets really frustrated with it, and then finally, Totoro and the other little forest spirits come in the middle of the night, and they do this, like, ritual where they, like, dance around the garden plot, and they go, mmm, mmm, and, like, help it grow, and it's like they're they're using their own will to, and to like concentrate the energy and help it grow. And then it, they do, and it grows all the way up. And it's like da na 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 na, and then they're up at the top of the tree. This is the vibe I'm getting, group number two. Like, what have you planted? And and your faith and like magic is helping it to grow. You've like you've like. Mm, scrunched yourself up and helped it grow in some way. <laughs> so cool. And you have protection. And that's, oh my God. And that is exactly what Totoro does in the movie. If, you're, if you've not seen it, it's one of my favorite animes of all time. I was obsessed with it as a kid. I would watch it over and over and over and over and over again <laughs> because I just loved it. And to this day, I rewatch it anytime. I, I, I just, I crave it sometimes. But um, he protects them. So anytime that, um, anytime that May or... Oh, shoot. What is her name? Her, her sister. I can't remember her sister's name. I sat here for like a good solid 20 seconds. I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> I can't remember her name. I've seen it a million times. Can't remember her name. Um, but I've never been very good with names. Protection. He, it's like he's the spirit of the forest. And he protects them anytime that they're lost or that they're upset or that, you know, something's not working. He, he kind of like steps in and helps them in that way. And I feel like this is what you have, group number two. You've got some kind of like divine blessing, divine protection. You have this support that really makes sure that your footsteps are guarded. Like everywhere that you walk is safe ground that's not going to fall out from underneath you. I see that really clearly. Like that's what they're literally showing me clairvoyantly they showed me first this woman here that's the way she's walking on the cups like or it looks like she's kind of walking on the cups and they showed me this like whatever you step on is like becomes solid for you because this is your protection and they just told me any ground that you plant a seed in will grow and become fertile so it's almost like you have this magical ability to go anywhere and like do anything group number two, I like, I don't know how this reflects in your life, but it's like anything that you put your, anything that you put your focus on, anything that you seed intention wise, it grows in some way, it percolates, it, it 
becomes more than what it began as. And I feel like this is kind of why they're talking about being open to what comes next, because you may have completed some kind of a cycle and you're starting a new path here, or you're, you're like moving into the next phase of it, or you're starting fresh in some way. It feels like a reset. It does. It feels like a reset because you've got the full tree now and you're like, okay, I'm going to plant something else or now I can actually enjoy this and, and maybe go on a retreat. So it's like you've you've accomplished something and it's almost like you've not necessarily been in that position before. Like maybe you've never seen it come to full growth and you're like, okay, now what do I do? <laughs> well, you just sit on top of that tree and blow your little ocarina because <laughs> that's that's all you need to worry about. <laughs> It's very much like, um, it's like this process of just being in the moment of the blessing or like enjoying the fruits of your labors or not constantly needing to be searching for the next thing, even though there is a reset. I'm hearing hard reset, okay? There's like a hard reset here, but you've got everything that came before it. And so... It's, you're like not starting from scratch. You don't have to go questing all about trying to find what's going to work this time because you already know, you already have that. So it's like you just kind of have to chill out is the vibe I'm getting, group number two. Like like relax, um, slow down, enjoy. I'm hearing the word bliss. Yeah, like find your bliss in whatever it is that you've created because that's the balance. I feel like there's maybe a tendency here to be like work, 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 or wanting to push, push, push. And I'm, I'm receiving this message for you, group number two, that uh, that's, that's, that's works, that that works for you, that definitely works for you. But um, you're just being encouraged at this particular phase, in this moment, or wh whatever this like culmination point ends up being, to really just like stop and enjoy it for a second. Because there's some kind of a healing. There's Yeah, there's like some kind of healing or realization you get from that. or There's enjoyment in it. Yeah, okay. Let's get some of these dice. You have Sagittarius. Well, you do have the, the chariot. And that can talk about... And you had retreat. So can be about travel. Mm-hmm. Venus. Yeah, beauty. I knew beauty beautiful. The Venus is the the goddess of beauty and it's very physical. She she also I I associate Venus with like growth as well. So literally beautiful and grow on that main significator card and all the other messages we've been getting in this reading. This this very much tracks femininity being significant here as well. And then you have the second house. Damn, group number two, second house is like value, what you value, uh, your physical possessions. I had a feeling it was very physical and it is for you. I feel like you're the type of person who's like always on an adventure for more, more beauty, more value, more wealth. Um, always, I'm getting this like questing energy. We don't have any knights here, interestingly, in your reading, but I'm getting this sort of questing energy. Like you're always searching, you're always looking for like the next best thing or um, the next adventure. And I think that's a beautiful thing. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to discourage that at all <laughs> because it, it is it is aligned with you. And so it clearly works. If you're able to go from the Ace of Pentacles to the Ten of Pentacles, like yeah, this works for you, group number one, uh, group number two. So um, that's a good thing. Right now, the message is like focus on the value that you've created because it is a lot, whether it's money or like some kind of um, enjoyment or like focusing on your body or your beauty or your routines, like something that like your beauty routine, something like that. It's like, my God, it's paying off, <laughs> group number two. It is paying off. And I just want to tell you, enjoy it. Like, that's really, I think, the main message here is like, just enjoy it because you may want to just move to the next thing. But no, 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 no. Like, stop and enjoy it. Stop and enjoy it. Stop and celebrate it. Take a trip. Heck, if you've manifested like a significant amount of money, 
like if you've grown that for yourself and i don't mean manifest it as like it just pops onto your doorstep or like into your account i mean like you work towards it you planted that seed you cultivated that growth you you created that then go on a trip group number two <laughs> treat yourself <laughs> that's kind of the vibe i'm getting from this reading you know from parks and rec when um uh the the two donna and what's his name again i can't remember the other guy's name aziz anzari's character go on a treat yourself day and they like go get their nails done and they they dress like super luxury fa fancy and they just go to the mall and like splurge on everything it, it's like one day where you can just fully fully indulge like that's like that's the only intention there's something about that especially if you already do that that is very protective it's very um yeah they're telling me dividends again it's like when you do that that's the vibration that's that's what you're manifesting like that's the seed you plant so like when you do that even if it's just one day a year that is the vibration that you are creating more of I love this message, group number two, like as if we needed more reasons to treat ourselves, but I think we do. I think I think a lot of the time we do need more reasons to treat ourselves because especially when there's a tendency towards like grind culture and over productivity and things like that, the guilt around slowing down and giving to yourself can be really heavy. So I would say take this excuse to treat yourself group number two because it's not even an excuse it's like a valid reason it's like profound spiritual wisdom and psychic healing to literally just treat yourself okay mm -hmm. yes that is the message group two so yeah get it <laughs> all right i love you guys that's that's what i have for you today with this mystery reading thank you so much for being here on the channel with me i hope you're enjoying the readings here if this is your first time welcome check out my other readings i have over 300 which is like actually over 900 because i do like three to four readings per reading yeah that's a lot of readings so <laughs> enjoy i love you guys and we will see you in the next reading bye all right, hi group number three, welcome to your mystery reading. Let's find out what card you chose and what your mystery message is. You have Embrace the Journey. Gummed Labels was actually the first thing I saw when I turned the card over. I didn't see Embrace the Journey first, I saw Gummed Labels. Gummed Labels, what is that about? And the, the domino is also really sticking out to me. Okay, let, we'll find out, we'll, we'll get more information. Let's go in with the tarot. What is this mystery message for group number three, Spirit? Page of Wands. I'm getting something to do with clearing or cleaning. The gummed labels is making me think of something that's like gumming up the works. Or, yeah, something that... It's like when you peel a sticker off of like a jar. You t take the label off of the jar and then it leaves that residue. And you need to use like Goo Gone or some kind of oil to get it off or like dish soap and hot water. There's something about like, there's like residue of something that needs to be removed. And the sage that this page of wands is holding, is making me think that this may be in your energy field. Um, yeah, it's like some kind of a sticky, something sticky that you need to cleanse out so that you can progress forward because the domino makes me think of the domino effect so if you clear this out if you remove that things don't get stuck and this momentum begins to take place the hierophant okay it could be something in your mind you see the way the hierophant is like pouring some kind of rainbow <laughs> reiki light energy from the cosmos from the universe into these people's heads it's like there's something sticky this residue is in your mind maybe about the fact that you can't move forward or like that you can't um progress because the page of wands likes to journey and you have embraced the journey and these people in this car like they're gassing up it almost looks like the great gatsby <laughs> something about like that this it just jogged my my associative mind to think of that so hmm i'm hearing the word freewheeling okay freewheeling Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it feels like you need to decondition some layer of your mind or some old residue 
so that you can just go do whatever the heck you want, group number three. That's kind of what, this is the vibe I'm getting. Queen of Pentacles. And I heard, don't hold yourself back when I turned the Queen of Pentacles over. Don't hold yourself back. Ah, uh, Queen of Pentacles in the shadow sense can become too rigid. And I heard that, too rigid. So there's something about rigidity here. Queen, yep, Queen of Pentacles and the Hierophant, that's both Taurian type of energy and the shadow side of Taurus can be can become very complacent and comfortable. Like Taurus as a sign, not as a person, but like as, a, as an archetype can be about like the home and the comforts of life and the security and the stability. And I'm seeing more like with Embrace the Journey and Page of Wands, this is more like Sagittarius energy where you just want to like get out because you want to <laughs> and you want to just have an experience for the sake of having an experience and not really needing a reason to or you know like feeling restless in some way and needing to get out of the mundane day to day i'm hearing nine to five so like especially if you work a nine to five and your days or your weeks are very routine there's something about um removing some of the residue of that and kind of like switching up the approach i'm hearing switching up your approach or switching up what you believe you can or should do yeah it's I feel like it's in your mind group number three it's like in your head like oh i can't do that because 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 uh but because 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 of the wonderful things she does do, 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 do. what is that from wizard of oz i think yeah, it's like getting out of black and white, like humdrum reality and being launched on this epic adventure where it's technicolor and you're following the yellow brick road. You don't know where it goes. Well, you kind of know where it goes, but you don't really know. So something about deconditioning your mind. The magician. Freedom. Freedom. Yeah, that's so random. That just like channeled right out of me right there. You're manifesting freedom very strongly manifesting freedom and uh i'm hearing the word transient okay page of cups this is something new you have two pages pages are the messengers they are the go-betweens they are the beginning of new cycles it's young adolescent energy so i feel like you're manifesting a fresh start in some way um this could come as an idea they just showed me the light bulb over her head creative inspiration is what I just heard, okay? You may receive some kind of creative inspiration that comes in the form of um, an emotional impulse, okay? An emotional impulse, and it could feel like restlessness. And what the message is here for you, group number three, is don't deny that because there's something in it that is trying to kind of like shift a pattern for you, shift something and, and get the momentum moving again i don't feel like you've necessarily been stuck i just feel like there is a bit of residue of something that has been gumming up the works in some way it's not stopping you at all like at all group number three but it may be temporarily holding you back I'm, i just heard holding pattern okay you could have been in a holding pattern in some way but it's like you're Ooh, yeah, I just hit a holding pattern with my speech and my thought and with my channeling. I just hit up against a kind of a wall. That's the second time in these groups that this has happened. That happened in group two as well. Hmm. Okay, let's keep going. Ten of wands. Okay, this may be the residue. This is the residue. It's like a bunch of stuff that you don't need. I heard clean out your car. I don't think that's going to be for everyone, but I, I did hear that. Clean out your car and embrace the journey. And they did show us the car. So it's like getting ready for some kind of a trip. Mm -hmm. And taking things out that are going to obstruct that. Yeah, something about that is significant here. Three of Pentacles on the bottom. I feel like you're planning something high priestess underneath that the hanged man that's the holding pattern and the king of wands i'm hearing take back your power okay yeah you're planning something or you're being advised to plan no you are planning something they, they said no it's not advised it's they are you've been planning this group number three what is it 
What have you been planning? You've been wanting to do something. Maybe you've been actually planning a trip or something, or you've been wanting to plan a trip and that's what you've been manifesting, like just having the general idea kind of thing. Hmm. Patience, horse tail. Well, the horse tail, they're actually showing me a horse running in the tail, flying in the wind. Yeah, it's, it feels like freedom, okay? It, it really does. It feels like a horse with no saddle. Um, this could be to do with work because I was getting this the, from the Three of Pentacles. It's kind of like all work and no play and like business, business, business. But your intuition is being like, hey, to get out of this holding pattern, we need to release some of these ideas of like, quote unquote, productivity or like accessibility. And we need to liberate ourselves here when it comes to what we actually desire and what we want to experience. I'm also getting another message of embracing the journey in terms of like having patience when things are not moving because that holding pattern may be teaching you something. I just got that from the Hierophant as well. It's like the, the, the moments of rigidity or lack of movement or stagnancy or where you feel like there's some kind of resistance or tension that's preventing you from fully being free. That is teaching you something. So it's not there for no reason, but it's not meant to stay there. They're giving me the word temporary again. So yeah, it's temporary. It's not meant to be permanent. That's the thing. Inner peace, chamomile. Inner peace. Feels like vacation vibes. Feels like taking a break. Feels like creating this inner peace for yourself by... I'm hearing speeding up to slow down. That usually is the other way around, slow down to speed up, but they said speed up to slow down. I don't know how to interpret that. Hmm. Right, because if you're already going slow, then you need to speed up to slow down. And they're showing me a car rocketing along a highway. I just heard a Malfi coast and they're showing me like a cliff on the edge of an ocean. Yeah. And like a highway and the car is like, it's like a sportster convertible something or other. And it's like ripping along, like not dangerously, not recklessly, just like, it feels like freedom and you're going fast, but you you've, you've slowed down because you're free. Huh? I like this energy. <laughs> Shape-shifting. Whoa. Yeah, transformation. The dragonfly there really stood out to me. Transformation is happening. You're getting past some kind of a hurdle. The mountains in the background standing out as well. So you're getting some kind of a hurdle out of the way, something that was blocking you. I'm seeing you doing some kind of shedding, shape-shifting. Yeah, you're shedding some unnecessary baggage. Yeah, and that is creating this inner peace. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, those two. Okay. Skull cap stillness. A lot to do with, like, you kind of having been either forced into this holding pattern to experience the stillness, to have this patience, to find some kind of inner peace, or again, speeding up to slow down, to have this inner stillness, like you've manifested this peace because you have put that into motion. Angel's trumpet with death. Whoa, okay. That's the shape shift. Death is just a transformation. Because matter cannot be destroyed. It can only change form. So this 10 of wands keeps standing out to me. It's like you are, you're dropping some kind of a burden or maybe you're turning that burden into something else. Hmm. They're showing me a mason jar. And that was kind of what I was seeing before with like the, the removing of the label. And I'm thinking now about how sometimes I'll order like classico pasta sauce. And then once I'm done using the pasta, I take the label off of the jar and then I use that for drinking glasses. It's like reduce, reuse, recycle, but it's kind of like you're, you're, you're getting double benefit out of something or you're like using your resources wisely. 
recycling something, repurposing it. Hmm. And there's something about like this, this, that it, like it provides for you in some way. That's the energy I'm getting is like, it provides for you in some way. Um, hmm. How does it do that? <laughs> I just saw the globe that looks like, I don't know if that actually is a globe, but it looked like a globe and I heard globe trotter, globe trotter. There's a lot to do with travel here. Now, I don't know if this is literal or if this is you embracing the journey of life and just going with the natural ebb and flows of things and not getting too rigid or too stuck in any one cycle or phase and allowing yourself to be reborn again and again and again. Deconditioning the mind. I keep seeing something about deconditioning your mind and, and being able to let go of things that don't work for you or that are holding you back and repurpose the things that that you can, like that, that still have some kind of value for you. Yeah. Okay, let's get... Um, let's get some Astro Dice for you as well, group number three. The 10th house, I did have a feeling that this has to do with work for you because the three of pentacles was really kind of vibing with me about like, this is something to do with work and Capricorn. Okay. Um, group number one may be significant. They had, they had, they had these two as well. If you watched group number one and then you came here, that's a very special message for you. Uh, the moon. Hmm. Okay. What is this telling me? Yeah, this is definitely a subconscious deconditioning, whatever it is that's going on here. And it's to do with work. I keep getting something about productivity and they keep showing me the, uh, is the Amalfi Coast in Spain? Because there's something about like Spain, because they're showing me something about siestas and like the slow lifestyle. You know what this kind of feels like to me? It's like the like a deconditioning of this Western mindset of like, go, 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 work, work, work all the time available, um, constant productivity, constant like push, 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 grind, all of that. And then Spain versus Spain. I've never been to Spain, but like, I, I, I know the stereotype of like, the Spanish people are like, no, <laughs> like Spain and Italy, everyone there is like, no, we, we're going to take things slow. We're going to enjoy our food, our friends you know, we take breaks, we don't push, like it's not about, the, like things will get done in their own time. That's, we're not concerned about that. And that actually helps them be productive in their own way because they're like well rested and not burned out and not like overdrawn in terms of, you know, the amount of work that they're doing. And so there's some kind of a transformation here that's going on internally for you, group number three, around your productivity and and how you perceive that and how you prioritize that and you may be shifting and people might actually see this in your work they can see that your priorities are shifting or that you're working smarter not harder yeah working smarter not harder and getting better results and then as a result of that you're helping other people and as a result of that, that's helping you because it's like there's this domino effect, there's this ripple effect, and it comes back and you get the resources you need. I keep hearing the word clientele. If you have clientele, this is a definite message. Um, or if you work with a company that has clientele, it's like you're, you're shifting something here in how you operate in your work, in your career. And the way people see you is like completely different because you're going through some kind of a change. And I just feel like the priority is no longer on how much you can do. Instead, it's on how you feel. Whether you're enjoying your time or not. It, it feels like you, you got kind of slapped with a realization here at group number three. I don't know how or when this happened. Um, or if it's, if it's yet to come, but like, it feels like you get slapped with a realization of like, this really doesn't matter. Like everything I've been doing doesn't really matter. 
and what really does matter, I have not been prioritizing. And I'm seeing the scene in the movie Soul when there's like the lost souls and there's like that hippie guy who like spins cardboard on the corner who goes into the astral realm to free lost souls who have gotten too um too like obsessive with what they're doing and there's this one stockbroker who's just like gotta 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 sell gotta sell gotta sell gotta sell he's just doing the same thing over and over he's like a zombie and they they take all that dross like that dense dark energy off of him and they free they bring his soul back into himself and he's like what am i doing and he like throws his computer off the table and like storms out it's like that kind of a moment something like that it may not be that (laughs) extravagant or that big or whatever but it's like this feeling of what am i doing like this doesn't matter or at least not in to the extent of the energy you've been putting in and then you're just like i i know what really like i need to live like that's the meaning of life i just i need to live i need to embrace the journey i need to be free i need to experience whatever brings me inner peace i'm free to change and shift and embrace these new experiences and opportunities in life and i'm gonna let go of all this conditioning around having to do things a certain way by a certain deadline it's like fuck that (laughs) fuck that group number three seriously free up your throat chakra get in your body fuck that like scream it to the rooftop fuck that because no no that's not what we're here to do We did not get put on earth to grind until we die. We got put on earth to eat berries and enjoy our life and connect with each other and be free and have sex and do whatever the fuck we want because we're human, we're animals, and we're also souls, spirits, having a physical experience on this journey that is this rock spinning around in space in this vast universe that we have no real full comprehension of. Like... (laughs) This is the kind of level of like a realization that I'm feeling. I mean, I'm, I'm even having it right now in your reading. And it's like, that's, that's the vibe I get. And it's just like the infiniteness hits you, the realization that what you were doing doesn't really make you happy or make sense to you in some way. And you're just like, I'm going to go do something else now. <laughs> Boom, shape shift, transformation death and rebirth and this realization may come in a moment of stillness it's a deep transformation it may come in a moment of stillness when you're just like feeling stuck because there's nothing you that you can do in that moment and that restlessness hits and that realization that epiphany they're bringing me back again to the light bulb it's like this moment of aha how did i not see that and as soon as you do, like your world is shattered, your world is blown because you're like, I can't keep doing that now. <laughs> can't keep doing that now. Feels kind of like a Saturn return, honestly. Like Saturn returns happen every like 29 years or so. And um, this can be associated with like that uh, midlife crisis type of energy because what you were doing, if, if it's not in alignment with what your soul is needing or or what you came here to do at soul level or to experience, then you have to shift everything and change direction. And that's not necessarily a must. Things can shift a little bit more gradually or slowly or less drastically, but like ultimately you will have a realization about what you really value, what you really want, and then you will shift into that. That's what I'm seeing here, group number three, really. Like that's what I'm seeing. And it's big, it's big. So I want to say have fun. Like that's that's like what I want to say to you, group number three. Have fun because life doesn't always have to be so serious, okay? Why so serious? <laughs> life is short. Hashtag YOLO. <laughs> Y'all know we don't live once. <laughs> if you're here on my channel, you know we don't live once. But this life does matter, so... Go live it to the fullest, group three. That is what I have for you in this reading. That's the mystery message. What a surprise. I enjoyed it. Two, 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 two on the recording time when I said that. It was literally two, 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 two. Okay, wow. (laughs) Yeah, so confirmation. I'm sending you guys so much love to enjoy this journey that is life to its highest effect and quality. (laughs) I love you guys, and we'll see you in the next reading. Bye.